be. Fooled by the rocks that I got. I'm, I'm still, still, I'm still Johnny from the back. Used Paint to have a little, now I have a lot. And everywhere I go, I came from. Ooh, ooh. I, this is what I look like today. I'm not at all. I'm more like a bigger uh, Steve Jobs. I love that sweater, by the way. <laughs> I like you. Know, you, you got yes. Yeah, Steve Jobs always right? wears a sweater. Steve Jobs. He? I have I <laughs> my hair half up, hoop earrings in, hoop. leather jacket. I'm hoop. channeling my inner. Looking cute, J-Lo. Listen, wearing everybody. your favorite happy color, which is black. Black on black we on always, black on black. You can never go wrong with black. I know. Black black always looks good. It looks sleek. It it make, it's slims slimming. You. Um, no matter what, you can wear all black and never is it out of style. Never does it look bad or never like shabby. It, like you no. can go to a gym or you can Correct. go to a nice restaurant like in the same in all black thing. Even if, I'm wearing black leggings right now with a leather jacket. Now and you it could still go looks anywhere. Nice. That's can you imagine if you wore like all white, all pink, all green like yeah look no <laughs> no judgment so oh well, but you can judge me on this one when i was in high school i shopped at express oh right I or s- like i still love an express and, and limited jeans yeah remember the mm-hmm. limited back in the day and stuff like that oh my gosh, so limited, in american steel. eagle mm-hmm. i still did and so i bought i think i had these yellow shorts mm-hmm. and i paired it with a yellow top but that was like low cut Oh, right okay. but i put like a purple tank top underneath it because that was like remember that was like the thing oh yeah you had something low cut you put a spaghetti strap underneath uh-huh, it uh-huh, uh-huh. so you weren't showing cleavage sure and you're still layering and still layering huge. i was literally all yellow and my best friend sarah in high school would call me her bright morning sun because i was literally wearing all yellow until this day <laughs> she still would like title call ca- like sign cards or like my bright title morning stuff. sun like hey my beautiful bright morning sun and Look. i and i was like it goes back to her kind of making fun of me because I wore literally all yellow. Look, right? I mean, we all tried some stuff, right? <laughs> all white. We all could, tried to like, yeah. oh, all, all white. All white can almost be pulled off during maybe a real housewife lady in the Hamptons in the summer. But I yes. personally can never wear all white because I will get a stain on that in the first five fucking minutes. Definitely. And... I'm not easily fat shaming at all. I'm only talking about myself. Mm. Like if I'm not feeling like the skinniest I've ever felt in my life, white will never make me feel good. Agreed. If you catch yourself in a reflection wearing all white in a, in a, a puffy week. Yeah. Fuck dude. It's you're, you just, it's not good. No. Um, I do like a white dress. Like if you're talking about Hamptons, like a flowy white, white, white. Me too. But uh, the only time I've bought white jeans or white pants was when I was in the skinny moment. Oh, right? gosh. When you're like, where you're feeling really good. I went to guess and I bought these super nice white jeans and I was feeling great about myself. I tried them on maybe about like a few months ago and they're so tight on my ass and they give me like the under butt. Mm, fun. And, and where it's I'm, like pushing it, making it flatter. Yeah. Fun. The under butt where it makes it look really um, chunky. Oh, and yeah, 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 yeah. And like, like two, all. And I'm like, two butts. The two oh, butts. Yeah. Um, and I was like, I can't do that. Did you ever hear that rumor back in the day of like what white pants meant if girls wear white pants? Means no. they do anal. What? I heard that. I don't know if it was high school, maybe after high school. And I was like, I've never heard this in my entire life. Okay. Right? Because there's certain things that but guys it was a thing, do. Like I, yeah. That I know, like, so if guys wear an earring in the left hand, yeah, that, pants like, pulled sh- down or color popped, it meant you were gay. It, that shit Apparently. changes though it does so change. change i think it changed with the time yeah i do remember that but i don't remember anything with girls no i heard if you wear white pants maybe it was like a couple guys fucking with me but i did hear it and i must have heard it somewhere else because if it's like- just from one person i don't say it's a rumor but it was like definitely enough in in my lexicon mm-hmm. that i was like oh shit every time i see white pants i think about it now do you really I'm like she must do anal it's one of those like it's an underground thing that i'm like oh yeah maybe like only certain people know like oh, i don't know it's weird how like stuff starts. now i'm being, now i'm gonna be self-aware i know right well you're just gonna think about it but you're like nobody else knows that or thinks that like how sagging started you know guys mm-hmm. sagging their pants but that started in jail started in jail and that means that you Take are gay but yeah yeah you're showing your butt and now it's like so now it's a cool thing, supposedly. Who I don't knows know if where it even is started. anymore. Who knows where that started? Well, now but. I'm going to be really cognizant of wearing white pants. Because before, I was just always 
I don't know. I was always kind of like worried that if I wore them with my luck, I would yeah. start my period in them. Yeah, with no, my yeah. luck. Because a lot of times too, thing. like there's you're you're very always. limited on your on your thong color or on things that you can and cannot wear with your yes. pants, right? Yes. And the ones that I've always worn, like white pants, are not are the smooth ones that don't have pockets in the back. So you're either wearing a thong or you're wearing nothing with it, which yeah. I'm very much a. And it has to be a really good quality thick jean if you're not going to be wearing uh, underwear correct just letting you know well when i worked at cheesecake factory again here we go again but you had to wear all fucking white dude <laughs> best days of your life wear all white so constantly there was times where i was That's like so oh my god fucked up dude i yeah thank god they don't do that anymore they right. make them wear fucking white pa- i mean black pants now i'm like thank god someone came to their senses right because where the fuck did you find like i had to find those decker like pants, oh god yeah you know what i mean that were white but they were kind of like flare bottomed and by the way, have you noticed flare jeans are coming back? Flared pants. I'm so pissed. Uh, why? Flare like a boot, I love them. like a boot cut or a very like I no, like, like a, a big, big flare. Oh, yeah, yeah, I like that. No, I like that. Ew, boot cut. No. When I see that's a boot a, cut, that to me is like, let's go work on the construction Dude, site. It's like, like Duluth trading, right? <laughs> Duluth trading pants. Duluth and you're like, trading. Yeah. Do your pants. Yeah. Do your pants. It's do for this. Like, it's like, for a. It's for a deb, right? <laughs> For a deb, a it's like I've got my no, t- I've got my no fuss, my no fuss tank, <laughs> and I've got my boot cut, right? Yeah. So I didn't. I thought you meant boot cut. No, but, like oh. flared. So I got some pants. free people, like bell bottoms. Yeah. So I got some free people bell bottoms. I'm not like, you know, when you like get something, you're like not sure how to implement it into your wardrobe. Oh. So I'm like, okay, it's sitting there. They look super cute, but I like don't know. I have to like go on some Pinterest stuff and like see exactly how people are like wear a cute, rocking like, them. This is I can tell you how wear a cute band tee or something. Yeah, and tuck it in right or even I mean, like have to a be tank feeling top better about myself and a too. jacket with yeah. it. Oh my god, I'm actually trying to look for some for uh, the American Heart Company. Like I'm trying to find some really cute. Oh yeah, bell bottom yeah. flare because I have a like couple a really fabric cute fabric one. Yeah. Or a jean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I found a really cute jean one that's like a dark jean mm-hmm. and it goes higher waisted yeah, and those yeah, are really yeah. cute. And I think no one can go wrong with a dark jean. Like yeah. everyone likes dark jean. But then also I want a fabric one. Yeah. Right? I saw Tara was rocking some. They're super cute. Tara's rocking yeah. legging ones, which I thought yeah, yeah. about getting legging ones made, but I'm like, I don't, I don't know. So I'm talking it's to my- It's a bold move. I'm talking to my legging manufacturers and figuring it out, but they have to be thick enough. And to me, they, those can look kind of cheap. Yeah. I like, to me, I'm more so like the fabric jean type. Yeah, yeah. Or like a corduroy. Dude, I would do. Have not seen the corduroy ones, but I Kinda would like do it. Kind of like a corduroy looking one where it's like a darker camel brown. I've seen someone yeah, with no, like, I'm or, in, or like I'm a in, rust. I'm in, I'm in. Yes, 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 yes. Something. I think that'd be super cute with a band tee and like a me fucking jean jacket. Too. Dude. I know. And this is the best part about like kind of having a company right? talking I can be to like, manufacturers. You order it, I'll it buy it. Yeah. Yeah. So nice. I'll have to show you designs later on. And maybe even I'll hit up like the brewettes with designs and be like, hey, what do you guys like? Yeah, but yeah. I, I think it's so exciting how stuff like this comes back. I know. Right? Yeah. Because before and they're we really talked cute about, too. Yeah. They're really cute. Before we talked about scrunchies. And people using those for t-shirts. And then the best part is I think we got hit up on Twitter by a girl that was like, bro, let's call me out. Because I guess she like put her shirt, like tied it up oh, in a in scrunchie. One? And we were talking about her? <laughs> no, not her. Oh, we were just talking like, about in general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, which by the way, we love when you guys hit us up. Especially after just if we have a podcast that, I don't know, meant a lot to you or hit you in the right way. Or just something that you want to add on. We love hearing Or if you were listening, from here's you my best like the best compliments i get when you're listening mm-hmm. to a podcast and you're like oh my gosh like i'm like- so glad that you were talked about that i felt it because i i know how that is because i too. love podcasts so much where you're like driving in the car and you're like holy shit yeah, fuck yeah. and you're like talking to your radio yes 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 i've I done say, that a million times so. i feel like the best compliments that make my heart so happy that just time and time again i'm like this is what makes me love doing, doing this whole this, podcast yeah. thing it's when people say I feel like I'm just hanging out with two girlfriends. Just hanging out. And just... I'm by myself. You guys are like like my best friends now. I just talk to you guys. I feel like this is consumes me. For sure. You're making up for the fact I can't go with my girlfriends as often. I'm like, fuck yeah. Yes. So anyway, we'll just say like a few of the things you guys have been hitting us up about. Um, First of all, 
when we talked about on the sex episode, which actually, by the way, a lot of things are on our sex episodes. People just hit us up and say, yep, that's me. Yeah, yeah. So I talked about tearing down downtown, mm-hmm. right? And there's been some times where I've gotten like little micro tears mm-hmm. in my taint or something or just from like having sex. And this chick was like, dude, my husband tears me too. Yeah. And like, I guess she was at her doctor and she was in a lady stirrup, she said. Yeah. And her doc was like, oh, you got a little tear. Let me put some Neil Sporn on it. You're like, thanks. And like, boom. Her doc was like, this is very normal. This happens yeah, yeah, often. Yeah, yeah. Just put a little Neil, dab of Neil Spore on it. No bigs. And like she said, that's what she does from now on. Nice. So she goes, so in case you ever need Neil Spore, it's perfectly safe for your puss. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually good to know. Right? It is. Good to know. Maybe it can be, I mean, I'm sure it could be maybe used for lube. But you probably don't want to use it internally. Nope. Probably not. Probably but you not. also think, you also joked about using Strike Force for lube. So Yeah, so I'm not the best person to tell you what to use and not use (laughs) right so that was one of them which i thought was awesome um this guy right here this would be mainly for ross and i know he's probably like secretly listening outside or something waiting for us to talk about him i heard you i heard you talk about me um but he was talking about vasectomies he's like hey i heard you guys talk about vasectomies and i wanted to let you guys know i got mine five years ago and it was the easiest most painless thing i've ever gone through hello yep are you listening (laughs) Ross are you outside the door um so he said after leaving the doctor's office I drove and picked up my girlfriend at the time and an hour um about an hour away loaded up our luggage drove another two hours to the vacation spot and this was after oh my the gosh. Whole surgery and then we walked around downtown and then we banged it out that night he said I think you're supposed to I so don't know if you're supposed to do it that he goes night, I pull, but- he goes I pulled out of course right but he goes yes um Yes, it's another two months or 20 ejaculations is what they say. Yeah, to yeah, like until wait until totally, you can, yeah. you know, do it in. He goes, if you guys have any questions, don't hesitate to hit me up. Okay, buddy. Right? We probably won't be asking you about your dick, but thank you so no, much. No, well, I'm saying even like guy-wise, right? Maybe if you should like, talk to Ross, Ross actually. Maybe yeah. Ross needs like a guy-to-guy hey, bro buddy, conversation. Hey, buddy, no big like, deal. Hey, it's okay. Your dick will be fine. You'll be fine. His you know? main thing is just like, it doesn't work. It's like... You need 20 ejaculations for it to work. This is good information. Yeah, that's great yeah. information. And he said it was the easiest painless thing. And that's, an, that's an, what and honestly, says. that's how most I hear sound to be. So that was one. Here's another one that I, like really touched me. And I thought this was great. So we had a gentleman hit us up and just basically was saying, hey, I really, really, really appreciate you guys talking about herpes on the last sex episode. Um, I have it. I guess he's been dealing with it for a few years. He got it from a girlfriend who cheated on him. Okay. So his girlfriend cheated on him and then gave him herpes yep. from when she cheated on him, which yep. like, I feel like in all honesty, a lot of times this is how it's happening, yep. which is like one of the worst Vice things versa, ever. Vice versa, both ways. Vice versa. But yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just saying like with someone cheating on someone and that's how they're it's getting it and that's how they know. not necessarily that someone's a fucking whore or no. dirty or anything. Correct. And I guess he's been really heavily judged for it, which has been really, really hard on him but still comes out and tells people, which is like, that's So huge. he's in his 20s. He wants to get married one day and settle down, and he's very honest about it. And every single time he's dating a girl, he, like, tells her, for the most part, like, up front right away. And he's immediately ghosted for it. He's always judged. People mm-hmm. think he's a man whore or something. He's went around, like, constantly. He just He's just disgusting. He doesn't take care of himself. And he's gone into some depression because of it. Yeah. And his self-esteem has just plummeted. And every time he hears about it or he talks about it, it seems like it's a negative experience, mm-hmm. which to me, I don't think it should be at all because for as many people as it seem, they seem to have it. Yes, a lot. And by the way, why is this ne- – It should again, we talked about this. It should not be a negative thing. No. If someone's going to say it to you, like good for you and also mm-hmm. I'm sure he's very educated on how to – prevent someone else from getting it all the said. like myths all the do's and don'ts like you know it's That's exactly what he said he said he's had sucks. it for a few years yeah he's on medication it's all handled he had like maybe not even two breakouts it gets it's handled you guys it's yeah. one of those things you know like how aids isn't really a thing anymore you just By take some way, fucking pills for it second person got cured from aids yeah like herpes is not a fucking thing anymore like calm the fuck down yeah. we have medication we have all kinds of modern medicine yeah. like just seriously stop freaking out about it i know that we had our our st- you know our thing about it even when we were in high school or something or whatever yeah. we heard in sex education class and it was the worst thing that could ever happen guess what 
it's not bad anymore. It's so sad to me though, that people are being honest and they're being safe. And then they're being and they are they are literally they feel like dating's pointless. They're depressed. They have lost all self esteem because people want to treat them poorly because of it. When little do these people you know that they probably some- have had sex with people who have it. Exactly. You so, will find someone, like I said in the uh, in the sex episode, I have a friend who had it. It was a little bit difficult for a while, but married, kids. It works out. Works out. You have to find the right person that's not a fucking idiot, by the way. Yeah. That's educated in some way, and you'll be fine. Correct. I think that's. I think it's a kind of a good way too to we to weed out the the idiots kind of like or the yeah. insensitive. All right, cool. People. Like, you like okay, yeah. whatever. But basically, he just said listening to you guys talk about it and hearing how you guys put it was really it was reassuring. Then everyone's super judgmental about it. Um, he was meant a lot hearing something more positive, especially on the positive side of things. Anyway, thank you so much. You guys are awesome. Love and respect. And that made me happy. Thanks, bro. Yeah, like to know that. Because people should, it's, uh, yeah. Anyway, don't be a fucking Educate yourself. Dick. Don't be dicks. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, keep your head up. I know depression's huge with that kind of stuff, even with, like, any kind of herpes. It is actually part of it. So mm-hmm. it does actually have a an effect on your, um, like, serotonin levels and stuff like that. So, oh, really? Yeah. So look into that and stuff like, uh, ask your doctor about that. But... Just stay up, you know. Thank you for being honest with people. Yeah. Continue to do that, and you're going to find someone that's fucking Absolutely. rad. I promise Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Okay, so then now we have, and I think we should definitely tell a similar a story like this because I think other people might be able to um, relate about mother-in-laws, father-in-laws, oh. in-laws, period. Uh-huh. Um, there was a tweet about Barb that we had put out as a joke, okay. right? We talked about Barb already on an episode in the past, but people had sent in, you know, stories of dealing with mother-in-laws. Nightmare Nightmare Um, mother-in-laws. This woman says that her mother-in-law is, basically she goes, let me preface this description of my mother-in-law. She's an angry, bitter woman who, according to her, has been screwed over by men her entire life. And she doesn't like anyone. Okay. Um, She's the mom from Mike and Molly, which I've never seen that. Okay, I haven't either. Only different reference. She goes only that. though. I guess apparently this chick's husband is the black sheep of the family. So apparently his mom hates him. Oh, because he's probably drove the dad away. Maybe who I don't suppose. I don't. Who knows? Pretty common, but she goes which anyway. Is shitty either way. <coughs> dad, I have the corona. <coughs> Pop. <laughs> like Zoolander right what just <laughs> happened though you did I cough I coughed and I have to now listen no one can cough nowadays without people freaking out about the damn corona so coughing I'm making a joke is, about it coughing is the new n-word coughing is the new <laughs> the <Coughing's Yvonne>. like, <gasps> yeah um but anyway she said that he's a good dude he's a really good son um and he says listen she's still my mom so I have to deal with her Right, like I respect that, but so, you anyways, guys have to be able to go ahead. Yeah, so she said we moved somewhat closer to his mom mm-hmm. and his other family a year ago, but my husband still worked in a previous area, so he wasn't really home a lot. So she said that his mom got sick, and she ended up in the hospital, and that like no one went to see her because the rest of the yeah no one went to see her supposedly. Okay. So she said so she went. So she went to go see this her evil mother-in-law Whoa. in the hospital. No one was there to take care of her. Her family was away. Her son is working, you okay. know, in another area. So she goes to take care of her mother-in-law. Okay. She goes, someone had to. So I stayed all day and made small talk, made sure she had what she needed. Well, the doctors wanted a stool sample, poop sample. So they gave her the hat to put into the toilet. She got up. She had to go. All of a sudden, I hear from the bathroom, Oh, my God. She goes, I ask if everything's okay. The mother-in-law says, no, not really. So she said, apparently, she didn't make it to the toilet. The stool collector hat fell off the toilet, and she basically shit all over the floor on herself. <clears throat> so there she is. She hit the call button, but no one came. So she's cleaning up her mother-in-law's shit, like, all over the bathroom and all over herself. And making sure she got the stool sample. Okay. So she goes, I found her clean clothes. I got her taken care of. Went back to bed. By which, you know, then the nurses, of course, showed up after I'm done. 
She goes, no, I'm no nurse or a caregiver, so this is not my wheelhouse at all. She was so embarrassed and kept apologizing. And finally, um, I just looked up to her and said, Karen, we'll say Karen. Sure. Karen, we're family. It's what we do. Right. Um, I guess later on, Karen texted her husband, her, her husband, um, her son, and said that she owes them big and that um, she loves, you know, her and that she's just so wonderful and apparently she's now the fixer of everything so apparently now so to, this is this is kind of sad to me a little bit but it's right. kind of like whatever yeah it's like okay maybe good finally where you have a mother-in-law who I, apparently she has treated this chick like shit right like constantly for right. years like told them they should never have gotten married that he's yeah. making the biggest mistake of his life yeah. yada 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 has been a thorn in her side mm-hmm. and so this girl sets all the differences aside and realizes that his mother-in-law who has been such a bitch to her mm-hmm. needed her right needed someone yeah and family she takes care of her she cleans up her shit and this is hey this is what families do she puts her differences aside and apparently now it took all of that for her mother-in-law to finally treat her with some love and respect yeah and part of me was like, you have such a big heart. I'm so glad she finally re- realizes how amazing you are. But then also, it's kind of like, it's kind of sad I had to get that, like, get to that point. It is sad, but you know, yeah. So I don't basically, know if she has kids, but like, there's. She d- yeah, they have kids. They so have kids. So she like, goes, this is what she said at the end. She goes, so yeah, basically, if you clean your mother in law's shit, she'll love you forever for the rest of your life, which is good because apparently they're going to, the, the evil mother in mother-in-laws will outlive us all <laughs> and oh, that was probably shit. like probably yeah i mean we all do what we gotta do mm-hmm. to get there right i mean yeah. i don't have a situation like that but um i know that for some moms it's hard to uh let go of your son and especially mm-hmm. that bond like with moms and daughters it's a little bit different know, as far weird? as like letting them go into like getting married like get married like i'll see you because they you know they will always yeah but dads and daughters but once a guy gets married off to his wife they don't usually talk the same way with the mom right whereas like moms and daughters we're gonna talk on the phone no matter what all the time Mm -hmm. right whereas when you get married off as a guy you're not going to keep the same relationship with your mom you are replaced right Mm -hmm. by someone else that is supposed to take care of you but so it's are, a hard are, transition. Are guys for, growing up like talking to their moms all the time about things cuz most no, of I know but don't. they are the, they they call if they don't have a wife, you better believe they're calling their mom for shit. Really? If they need something, if they need yeah. Oh. Yeah. Uh most of the time, I mean, I don't know if you guys have, I mean, it doesn't sound like your husband has that, but like most of the time like if they have a good enough relationship with their mom, they're still going there for Thanksgiving, they're still having mom cook them their stuff. There's you know what I mean? Oh. I've huh? never, I guess I've, I, all the guys I've dated, uh-huh. um, the first guy that I did it, his mom had unfortunately tragically died in a drunk driving accident. Like she got hit by a drunk driver. Right. So he didn't have a, like, and his mom was his best friend. So yeah. they were married and then my ex-husband like didn't talk to his mom. Right. So, yeah, you know, most of the time that's, and some of the guys I've dated, like when their mom calls, it's like, oh, it's my mom. And they're so annoyed. They may be annoyed, but if they needed something, oh. they'd be calling their mom. Yeah. They're annoyed. They're not talking to them all the time. But if they needed a woman to help them with something or if they needed like they needed something, they're mm-hmm. calling their mom. And when you get married, they don't do that anymore. I will say this is that I know and you I don't know. I mean, I know personally growing up, I wasn't as close to my mom. My mom was like the hardest on me for sure. Mm-hmm. I feel like in some ways. And I was closer to my dad because I was like daddy's girl, right? Oh, yeah. Like yeah. my dad was always protective of us girls. My dad's really hard on my younger brother. Oh, right. Yeah, Whereas yeah. my mom has a good relationship with my younger brother. She is more easygoing on him. Yeah. So my mom's easygoing on her son. My dad's easygoing on a daughter's. It, and apparently that's how it is in a lot of families. Yeah. Per se. And so I know that for me, my dad was the protective one. And it was like the guy had to win over my dad. Yeah. So, and, and traditionally, I feel like, too, with guys, you kind of have to, like, win over their mom, yeah. right? I can see that. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Um, but I, I th- that's hard, though, when you, you're constantly trying 
just like she is yeah. and you're not seeing any progress and it has to get to this point and it's funny too because she wrote she wrote us back and said i spoke apparently too soon i just got accused of like starting issues and throwing out oh my books. gosh stop dude no no joke she goes she's I, back on her bullshit yeah she's back on her bullshit like she goes apparently she's mad at me for throwing out cookbooks she gave my kids like six months ago and saying that i'm like toxic and whatever well there you go she's all better now She's but not in the hospital anymore. It's so, like, come on. Just put the bullshit aside. You, yeah. you know what I mean? At the end of the day, like, sometimes family is, like, all you got. Yeah. But you so, shouldn't have to really hang out with them that much if you don't want to yeah. either. So it's like, I agree. if you have to see her Thanksgiving, maybe Christmas, ah, pish. Like, deal with it, right? Sure. But if you, if she's in your fucking business all the time, oh, yeah. then you're going to have to fucking have a conversation with somebody. Yeah. Right? Because, yeah. like, shit like that, you can be like... Okay, fuck you. Like, I'm, I'm not just, even I'm just glad I don't have to deal with stuff like this. Mm-mm. You know what I mean? Because, like, yeah. Part of me was like, no, thanks. So when I was reading these things, I was a little bit like, oh, man. Like, okay. Yeah. That really sucks. Yeah. And so I think that was probably one of the funniest things. She was like, yeah, just clean up your, you know, your mother in law shit. I was like, damn. She's still not good enough. <laughs> no, still not good enough. Still not good enough. Well, I'll I read actually some of the was comments. Su- I was surprised when I was like, "Oh, that worked, huh? Fixed it, right?" Believe well, me, she'll have something else going on. These are the comments that were made. Um, my mother-in-law told my husband when we got engaged, "How about instead you fly me out there first class, write me a check for forty grand, and I'll kick you in the balls, and then you can fly me back home because that's better." And then this other lady's mother-in-law said that she encouraged her son to do an interview about his affair to the Huffington Post. Oh, yeah. That That was the one I told you about. Yeah. What the fuck? Right? And then someone said, I really hope you guys discuss this on the episode. And I was like, don't you fucking worry. (laughs) But we did it anyway. Yeah. But isn't that crazy, though? Yeah. Some of the stuff that we hear from you guys. So. God. It makes, like, whatever. I mean, I don't, again, I don't have a situation like that. But if you do, it kind of makes, puts it into perspective, right? Where you're like, I don't have it that bad. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Where you're like, this lady cleaned up fucking shit. Still not fucking good enough. Right. So be happy with the like little overbearing stuff that you get from your. Correct. You know what I mean? Yeah. It could be worse. It's always going to be something. I guess that's one way to look at it in a silver lining. Like it could be worse. Could be worse. I mean, it could be better, but it could be worse. Could be worse. And so just be happy with what you have. Yeah. And you never know. I never. I hope that I'm not like that. That's my biggest thing. With my sons. I mean, I hope. I don't think I'm going yeah. to, but if I, if, if I don't, I mean, I'm not going to really care about the girl. I mean, if they love them and they make them happy, but if I feel like they're manipulating them in any way, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Are you going to step in? Are you going to be that mom who like steps in and be like, I feel like she's manipulating you or? No, it's just going to be hard. Like it, it will be really hard mm-hmm. to be fucking cool and nice to someone if they're not. But at the same time, like I have no idea. Like I have no idea how I'm going to feel. Yeah. I don't. I have two sons. I'm I trying Because what if you guys don't get along? What if you guys are like complete opposites? What if she's rude to you? I'm better at... Because I don't feel like you would deal with that well. I don't think my sons would deal with that. So what I'm trying oh, okay. to do... What I'm trying to do is set the ground Raise work them. now. Yeah. And be like, you know, what they deserve and what they need to respect. And like, you know what I mean? Yep. And I'm trying to make them self-sufficient as well because, mm-hmm. um, you sure. know, I've been in relationships where the husband j- or when the guy, it, the guy, yeah, <laughs> the guy just didn't know uh, how to do simple things. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. clean up stuff for laundry or whatever. To yeah. Where, like, like you're going to live by yourself for a certain amount of time. Yep. I want you to be able to be organized, know how to do laundry, dishes, cook. Very smart. Do you know what I mean? Yep. And so when your wife comes into the picture your girlfriend your long-term whatever they aren't now turning into your mother yes which sucks right i don't want to be replaced Mm -hmm. but i don't want him to need me to be replaced you know what i'm saying yeah so i'm trying it's gonna be hard i don't know though yeah because my mom's gonna happen like my mom and dad i'm i mean i'm the firstborn so i when i was younger i moved out immediately they made sure at 16 years old it was self-sufficient i had my own job i was doing everything as I got older and as, you know, they kind of chilled out a little bit, they wanted the kids to stay into the house more. They, you know, we, they were starting to get a little oh, bit more emptiness syndrome. Yeah, 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 they're yeah, like, yeah. we'll totally stay. So my youngest brother, 
who's the Day younger longer. one, is, you know, he's, what, 22? Mm-hmm. Going to be 22 in May, and he's still there. Now, they make him do certain things. Sure. Like, it's like, you cook your own damn food, yeah, yeah, yeah. you buy your groceries, you do your own laundry. Like, I'm not your maid. Yeah. So they do that, but I know my mom misses him. But this is one thing I respect, is my younger brother uh, is dating this girl that he just absolutely loves, and she's going to school in Utah. Okay. Um, he's not going to college after his first year. Again, he was kind of like me. He felt really lost, and he didn't yeah, want to yeah. just keep going just to rack up the bills and not know what the fuck he wanted to do. Mm-hmm. So he's been working full time, and he's going to move out to Utah. And he wants to move out on his own, okay. have a fresh start, be responsible for himself, because he feels like as long as he's in Missouri and he knows he has a bunch of family yeah. there and friends, he's going to be leaning on them. You never fully know what it's like and to he have doesn't. to. And yeah. I'm like, good for you. Yeah. And I'm so proud of him for that. And of course, my parents are encouraging him, but they're also saying, hey, make sure you have stuff in line. Make sure, like, this is a huge change, dude. Yes. Like a huge change. Yes. And so part of me too, I'm like, I kind of want to talk to like uh, Ready Gunner or maybe Black Rival who's out there and just see if they have any opening. He's a super hard worker. Oh yeah. And just be like, hey, maybe you should look into these. Maybe apply for these jobs because that would be a great they opportunity. might be needing people in you Utah. You know what I mean? Just saying. He's super hardworking, dedicated, gives you all he got. So that's. He's not military, right? No. Oh, okay. Yeah. But yeah. it's just. Doesn't matter. I'm just wondering. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. He, with my parents instilling that in us from like day one, yeah. Like, listen, you work, you need to work hard, and that's how you get ahead in life. Yeah. You want it, if you want to do better, you need to work harder and be better. So, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. So I'm like, good for you. So I wish him the best with that. I think that's smart. Yeah. To be and self sufficient in that way. Huge. Like I know. <laughs> very rarely would you go. Do you remember like going to guys' houses that were like clean? Yes, it was super rare. Very rare. And to where you I'm were like, like oh so my shocked. god, this is organized. Like. You don't just have a fucking weird sheet on top of a bed on the floor. Right. Like, um, you actually have things. Yes. Where you're like, it's not gay, but you definitely have like, you know what I mean? Your yes. shit in order. And it, it was, looks nice. It's very impressive because I can't tell you how many times I went to like college dorms or even like military dorms or housing yes. with these guys. And it was, it was like as if they were Sasquatch. And they shave their entire body and they just never clean it up. Yeah. On the soap, on the everything. Everything. And you're just like, this is disgusting. Food crusty crusts like everywhere. Dishes. And just started Oh. And you're just like, how do you live like this? The first thing I think is either their mom raised them right or Mm -hmm. their ex girlfriend taught them. Right? True. Yeah, kind of one or the other. Like someone trained you. It's either your mom or you were living with a girl that was like, this is what you fucking do, dude. And she didn't do everything for you or whatever it is. But it's one or the other. Mm -hmm. Guys don't just like know how to do it. Oh, dude, I'll tell you right now, whoever my ex-husband married has it good because he was trained right. Yeah. Oh, okay. like he was so like it got to the point where I was where like, you no, like, Dude. you will clean up after yourself. You're going to be doing the dishes. Like, you know what you mean? Yeah. This is like couple joint effort. Um, He did great at it. Like that was one thing after I left. I was like, he he really did try. Yeah. You know, in that aspect, eventually later after we were together, because at first his house was kind of like it wasn't bad, but it was one of those rules. Kind of like, look, it's dude. Yeah, right? And work. like dude clean can be a little bit different. Than it's very, I'm very clean. forgiving with it. As long as you make an effort. Right. Good for you. Then I'll just like, like I'll take give it. you the tools to make it look nice and clean or whatever. I told but, Chris, I said, listen, if even if you make an effort to sweep twice a week after your dog, because your dog's a mess. That's true. Huh? Right. It's the dog thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you decide if you decide to clean up twice a week after your dog, even though I'm sweeping every day, I will take that over nothing. Because to me, like even though he does a half ass yeah. job, not purposely, but it's just a very different standard than me. I think women have a very different standard of clean for the most part than men. We just have different eyes. Sometimes a little bit of attention to detail. It's so weird. On things, right? When I tell Ross to go look for stuff, sometimes I'll be like, How? use your looking eyes. Do you know what I mean? Because he'll be like, <laughs> put on your looking glasses. Yeah, I was like, can you, can you get that water for me? I just don't, I don't see it. I'm like, <laughs> it's literally right in your hand. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Use those looking eyes. Yeah. I'm sure he loves it. So it's one of those things. And to me, I told him, because he'll, he'll always say to me, well, I know it's not up to your standard, though, and I don't want to, like, get shit for I it. Know. Well, and, that- I, and I say, listen, I will take that over nothing. This is huge, actually. This is going to be a little tip. What? Um, it, co- it comes more with kids, right, when mm. you have kids. But I know there's some friends of mine that are having problems because the wife is like, he just doesn't fucking help. 
He doesn't help with anything. He doesn't do anything. I'm like sitting there doing everything. He's not doing anything. He's just sitting on the couch. Come to find out from what we saw, like we now have more, you know, hanging Inside. out with them and seeing it more. And I have been victim of, I've been guilty of this as well. But whenever he would try and do something like. She would critique. Yeah. So mm-hmm. he would like try and give the give the kid food or whatever and put it on the thing. It's not right. She would come behind him. Come on. Like it's not. Can you just. I've been guilty of that too. So he keeps like trying, trying, trying. And he never can do it right. And he thinks so himself, he just fuck fucking try? stops. Mm-hmm. Because he's like either. I'm, I'm just going to hear shit for it. So I. I have done that. Definitely I have too. To Ross with the kids. And now I'm like. It, I'm doing everything, but it's my fucking fault, to be honest. Like, yeah. I c- I'm trying to, like, reprogram a little bit and just be like, okay, just let let it happen. Even if it's a mess, even if they aren't fed right, even if they're dirty, he did it. Yeah. He kept them alive, right? Same. And Chris and I had to have that little sit down because he goes, I don't want to sweep the floor if you're going to come after me and just sweep it yourself or say Blamo. that I do a half-assed job. And I said, you're right. Blamo. And that's when I told him straight up, listen, I really would appreciate it. I don't care how you clean it. I don't care if you want to hire someone once or twice a week. And I, I don't care. Shit. I don't care if you do it. Either way, I just need a little bit of your help. And every time he does it, all I say is thank you so much for doing thank that. Thank you. And guess what? It's it happens without it, me. That's even a huge marriage tip, you guys, because I've seen it break up two marriages. I mean, that probably not is the I'm only sure, thing. I'm sure. It, but it's definitely been a huge problem in a couple of up. my friends' marriages where you just see this. It's resentment, 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 not talking about it, being critiqued, being bo- – and then yeah. you don't help, and then they get mad. And then you – you know what I mean? It just, like – it grows into this huge tree that, like, splits your house apart. So – And a lot of people that keep one these I had things to learn in recently. because they like to bottle them up because they think to themselves, well, this is super minor. I'm not going to say anything about it. And then – a yeah. bunch of minor things build up Goes into something and huge forth. and then all of a sudden a small situation turn into something large i'll tell you this i've had conversations with my mom before and she gives me really good advice too and she was sometimes like tiffany is this is this something that needs to be made a big deal or is this pick something that you can just deal with pick your, your battles battles so for example my mom said for years my dad would always leave his shoes out and it drove her nuts and she always would ask him daily to put him away and they'd get into fights about it all the time and she finally had to sit there and go is this something we really need to be arguing about or is this something that i simply can just move and put away myself and not start a single thing right because it just might never change right and so she realized from that day forward is just one of those things where she just puts them away where she wants them she doesn't say a single thing doesn't create problems she picks her battles done and it's true and it's, it's also and it works under- with guys and girls and it's- girls it's also understanding that you aren't perfect either Correct. there's stuff that he's either letting go of or he doesn't yeah. notice i don't know yeah. but there's stuff that i do that he's he's letting go right yeah so i can definitely do the same absolutely and that has helped us a lot for me just like letting him do stuff and if i do go back around and clean it he doesn't see me yeah do you know what i mean no this it's right. not like oh Great, great job. Like, yeah, correct. Yeah, there's certain shit. things I will, if I have gotten on Chris before, he'll sit there sometimes and, and be like, well, you know, I don't really like this. Right? Yeah. And traditionally, I don't put the dishes in the dishwasher right away. Sometimes. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I like to do it me. all at once. <laughs> okay, yeah, me too. Like, so I like a big thing and I like me put too. it all in. Yeah. So <laughs> I will leave stuff in the sink. But I do it anyway. I'm the only one that does it. So. I, Right. So I'll leave stuff in the sink. Yeah. And then at the end of the night or at the end of a few days, if things haven't been used, I put them in the dishwasher all together, kind of. Exactly. Right. And so if Chris's thing is like, just you just use the fork, take it and just open up the dishwasher and put it in. It feels weird putting one (laughs) fucking thing in there. Like, what am I? That's how I feel sometimes Nickel and diming the dishwasher. That's what I'm saying, though, is, again, uh, he never says anything unless I decide to be like, right. And then he'll be like, listen. Yeah. You bother the fuck out of me when it comes to the damn dishes, but I don't talk about that every time you do it. He goes sometimes, and I'm like, okay, you're right. All right. And sometimes you just kind of, it's he's like a give r- and take. He's wrong, by the way. But <laughs> yeah. it's right. You know. You hear that, Chris? You're wrong. But <laughs> I hear you, and like, we'll, d- you know. Yeah. We'll work on it. We'll work on it. Yeah, it's whatever. You're fucking wrong, but. <laughs> That's what I say. I'm like, I do it all anyways. Who, who, cares, who cares how I do who it? Who cares when I do it? That's what I mean. Oh, there's fucking clothes all over. Well, I'm the only one that picks them up. 
So I will pick him up when the fuck I want to. Look, yeah. we're yeah. obviously right, and they're obviously wrong. <laughs> obviously. <I'm> just joking. <laughs> No, I know. So that was, but that was the biggest pro too. tip that we clearly both have learned recently. Mm-hmm. You oh, and I. Have. Yeah. So, well, we have a question, too, from a listener. So I feel like this might be a little bit more up your alley because I don't have kids yet. Mm-hmm. She goes, hey, I need some date ideas. And I can help with the date ideas, too. She For goes, sure. my husband um, works thirds and he works weekends and I have a Monday through Friday job. She goes, we have a two year old, um, and we have a hard time finding a sitter for the evenings for us actually to go on a date night. So even some at home date suggestions would be awesome from you guys. I need the romance back in our lives, um, rather than being in some toddler parent slump, which is where they're at now. So I guess her youngest, sorry. She just has, they just have a two year old, a two. Oh, just yeah. They just have a toddler. Okay. I guess apparently they're in this toddler parent slump right now trying to figure out how things work. They still need the romance in their life. So she wants to know, it's not really a technically a question, but she would love to hear us talk about our date nights or like things we've done or any cute romantic things you guys do for your husbands or anything she could do at home. Um, this one's hard because you have to get out of the house. Mm. Is that what you have kids? If you don't, we can have all kinds of like make a fort fucking have sex in the living room like watch a movie whatever yeah um i guess i'm not understanding why it's so hard for a sitter for a sitter i um, think because i find i found like college girls i found referrals from uh-huh. places if there's a daycare place by you of any sort those girls usually do nighttime stuff on the side and they are awesome because mm-hmm. they work with kids all day um, is it the thirds thing? What? Why are they not able to? Go? Oh no, I, that's yeah. all I have. That's so the only thing I'll say is like I know it's hard. It is really hard to find a sitter and go out, but you have to get out of the house. Is the only thing I can say. You have to get out of that where parents place mm-hmm. because if you are at home, your kid could be waking up. You can't be that loud. You can't. You know, he, you're you're there still. Yeah, you're parenting still. Um, and you have to reconnect in a way that's not that right. So it's, this is a difficult one only because, um, sometimes it's, it's cool to, you know, watch, watch a movie like, uh, you know, I don't know what you can do, but like make a little picnic in your room or whatever. Um, but from having kids and from having a toddler age that, me and my husband started fighting a lot and growing apart a lot mm-hmm. is because we didn't get out get out and do regular reconnect things and be husband and wife again and i know you think that like oh the kids asleep we can like make it happen it's not the same and it's very very important if the anyone if, yes if you can wake them yes or if they can wake them or was that them or you have the monitor next to you or something right so um I was I moved to a new town too and it was hard for me to find someone that I trusted there's that too where you're like oh my gosh it's my first kid like I do know some moms who just don't trust sitters let alone even really good friends like okay I know a few moms that's hard but um it's just it's like a mm -hmm. it's something that they're holding on to it's just difficult for them or I know some moms who feel bad leaving their kids right and I get that but at two is when it sounds like two they're two you're now starting to think which is normal now you're starting to think okay they're kind of a little bit more grown up they're not quite a baby anymore now I can think about having a date night Mm -hmm. is what it sounds like and um anyone that is ever having problems in their marriage or dealing with little kids or whatever I'm always like you have to find a way to get out whether it's parents whether it's like your sister whether it's whatever that's Mm going to watch the kids even for a couple hours doesn't need to be going out drinking all night or whatever but even just a couple hours out of the house walking somewhere having a drink somewhere like it uh it it is very important i think that's yeah so it's hard i know you you'll probably i mean you probably have some date night ideas for inside or whatever but yeah i say i mean you're right though i do feel like I mean, I'm not in the boat, so it's so hard to speak on it, and that's why I gave it to you. Yeah. Because I just don't know what it would be like. But the biggest thing is... You don't know is, it while you're ha- while it's happening to you? Yeah. Like, even they don't understand what it is. But I promise you, once you get out, you'll be like, oh, fuck. Like, yeah. <laughs> okay. But I yeah. think some of the, the best nights that I've had with Chris, just, like, at home, 
has been him. So, so it's really cute what he does sometimes. So, um, some of the most romantic things are sometimes the most simplest things. Yeah, right. Exactly. There's been times where he's woken me up in the morning, which I know it might be hard to do. So maybe you can do this in the evening where maybe after your husband puts down the kid you come up to him and act like you're a server at a restaurant yeah. and like chris has no joke chris has made me a menu of things oh that i can pick from that i can choose right that he has like kind of made like appetizers and like stuff for dinner and we'd be like madam what would you like to eat like kind of joking roll yeah, but role playing, you but go along with you know it, what i mean yeah, yeah, and yeah. i'm like oh sir and he's actually a handwritten menu with like colored and crayons Right, he's he's done this to me woke, waking me up before. It's been really cute, cute, like taking me breakfast on a tray. Cute, and he did it for Gracie and I one night too. And you, depending on your kid's age, like yeah. Chris made um, Gracie's his daughter, so that's my stepdaughter. And he did the same thing. He gave me poured me wine. He poured her like Kool Aid in her in a wine glass. Cute, and he was had the waiter, you know, yeah. towel on his arm. <laughs> it was like Madame and candlelit dinner and we loved it that's cute and it was building up memories yes and then at the end of the night um you know either a favorite movie like build like a little camp out area yeah in your family room sleep on the floor yep. cuddle mm-hmm. talk about life watch your favorite movie drink some wine yep. it's like something simple like that where you just blast out the right re- like keep out the rest of the world focus on you guys have those conversations that you guys used to have in the past like yeah vulnerable conversations like hey how are you like where do you see us in a few years or yeah. like what are your goals and dreams or yeah like yeah the thing, some of the deep conversations that i think sometimes we forget to have because we're so used to talking so about like, the did small you shop? things did you like did you get the food yeah. like what are we doing for the, right yes. we always talk about those things and yes. some of the best nights that chris and i have had in bed is we don't always go to bed together because of just work yeah. right Same. but when we do um, we try to talk a little bit beforehand and we get vulnerable sometimes or like the you know the questions I asked you like if you had to choose one thing yeah, yeah, for the yeah. rest of your life him and I went back and forth about these things that's cute right and even like if you could kill one person and get away with it who would it be oh I bet or you guys like, go off on that one huh because you actually <laughs> yeah, could you know I bet I mean? that's, or that's like just real funny things you that you just like joke around yeah, about yeah, or get yeah. to know each other like little things like that are yeah. fun and by the way if you can't think of questions google them Google them. Write them down in a cute little jar. What the fuck ever. Yeah. I don't even know. So like, if you absolutely can't yeah. get I'm saying out, if you can't I think get out. that's cute. Like, I think and even that, stuff too, the waiter like, thing, I love that. That's it, awesome. I'm telling that's you right awesome. now. I have hair in my mouth. Uh, that was like, like, that's one of the cutest things. And it's so sweet and it's so simple. Yeah. But it shows so much effort. Yeah. And just love in it. that I'm just like, oh my God, like she'll remember this forever and yeah. I will remember it. And that incorporates the kid. And then you put the kid down. After they're full, yep. get it on. Do it at your thing. Do your thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Chris and I have played Truth or Dare before with each other. Cute. Mm-hmm. Um, which has been a lot of fun. I know that's kind of hard to do if you have a kid. You can be kind of quiet. Mm-hmm. But it was raining outside, and I dared him to, like, helicopter's dick out on the yeah. back porch. And then he dared me to make a home porno. Like, yeah. fun things, yeah. which we've yeah. done. Those are still cute things that keep the fucking sparks yep. alive and you have yep. to do it every once in a while because yeah. if you don't it's it's like a reset button you have to yeah. get away from the fucking normal world well my always like my advice is going to be a little bit different than than most people right because i'm very much like you have to get back to yourself you have to have your own identity as well you do. so but i i understand yeah. that before two don't don't even think about any of that stuff like get your kid to age two and then start thinking about who you are getting out of the house maybe you and your husband should meet up with friends like yeah. there's also that part of it of like it's you guys together but it's also you guys as real people without kids it sounds like you're very much in a like work and kid world yeah and that can be you know I know you guys are probably very strong but that can be a, a, a killer for sure and it'll be really it'll be a lot harder down the line to try and reconnect than it will be right now if you can find someone to just help you out a little bit Mm -hmm. so you can reconnect with your husband and get back to yourself yeah it will uh it will be huge i promise and you won't even know that you needed it till you did it yeah and listen your date nights don't have to be super extravagant over the top you don't even have to spend money what's the thing you're spending the money on the babysitter go for a fucking walk that's what i mean some of the the last date night chris and i had which was hilarious and here's the thing too if your spouse I will say this. If your spouse is recommending something that they really want to do and it's not up your lane, still try it. Do it. Because for a year and a half, I recommended us going to a roller skating rink. I know. I, I, You've even this been is crazy. since we I know. Each other. Yeah. I 
I grew up rollerblading. It's such a good memory for me. I love it. Chris was a, played hockey, so he's great. So what's the problem, right? So he just kept saying, "No, it's stupid. No, the place near us is ghetto. No, I don't want to go. Like we're probably, <laughs> and you know what I mean. Look, and they're whatever. always ghetto at this point. Yeah, go, have fun. And so we went in Raleigh to one, and don't get me wrong. Like by the way, like him and I were the only white people there. Hey, still. I it, it was, was a blast. Yeah. It was a fucking blast. It was great. And that's the thing. It, I think it's like a St. Louis thing. Okay. So like people love to go. Like so because I grew up in St. Louis. So people just love to go and they do the dancing and they it's a cheap place for people to that hang sounds out. Sounds fucking fun as shit. We went there. Had a blast. Like all of a sudden he went from like, I don't want to be here to, to like, like fuck sk- yeah. he was skating backwards and sideways <laughs> and like. He was doing. He was flips. all over the fucking yeah. place, and I was like, "This is hilarious." And then we went to a fucking Irish pub that our Uber driver recommended. Perfect. Who it was a band playing all old school music. We ate super late, and it was a blast. And I was so happy. You See? know what I mean? And he See? was happy that I was happy. And secretly, I know he had a blast. Right? You know what I mean? He's gonna get what he wants later. Mm-hmm. You got what you want. Mm-hmm everyone's happy but it was like, even stupid stuff like that where you're like oh i don't want to go to a trampoline Try place it. maybe it'll be fun i never laughed so hard in my life than at a trampoline park with chris oh my god you know what i mean because we played dodgeball with kids and we were just laughing our asses off and he's like sticking him up his shirt and being goofy and rolling around like a child and i'm like i love you we can't go to those uh i would pee <laughs> my yep my neighbor told me the other day she was at a trampoline park and Sorry. all of a sudden was like bouncing and, and she was like oh, did i start my period Am nope. I ovulating? Nope. And I was like, and she was, so I went to the bathroom and I realized it was pee. And I was like, no way. <laughs> you peed a little bit. Yeah. You'll never see a I mean, mom. She's had a few You'll kids. never see a mom out there at the. Uh, really? <laughs> oh. Shit. Maybe I'll enjoy it while I'm young. Not young, but like not a mom yet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I have one. We have one more thing I kind of wanted to talk about. Okay. Um, before we end here. So I know you and I have talked in the past. So you and I talk on the phone. You know, we chit chat during Pretty much the much like every day. Yeah. And I had mentioned, hey, I noticed in our podcast description, you know, we have anti-feminism in there. And basically, I was a little bit concerned and I was just explaining my concern to you because I was like, well, from what I know, feminism is talking about. And I will read you the definition that I kind of have here, which is what I thought it meant. Right. Mm -hmm. It's um, about respecting diverse, basically respecting women Mm -hmm. and basically saying that we're all equal. Mm -hmm. So being feminist simply means believing in equal rights for all genders. It's not about hating men. It's not about women being better than men. um, And it's not about um, pushing like femininity on people. Apparently, it's just saying that all genders are equal. And to me, I was like, yeah. That's what I believe. Yeah. I've been, you know, living this and pushing this kind of my whole military career in life. Yeah. And then when I saw we put anti-feminism, I was yeah. like, oh, man. So we're we giving people the wrong message. Yeah. And I was asking you about it. I was like, so why do we have that? Can we put something different? I, was, I don't want people to read that and be like turned off thinking that we're like anti-woman because I don't think that you are. And no. I know that I'm, you know what I mean? That yeah. I'm not. So I figured we can have a good conversation about this. Yeah. And I think people too, I know this is like a hot topic. Yeah. And a lot of people talk about it. So. So uh, the way that I think about it, which is like there was first wave feminism, which is like when women weren't allowed to work outside the house. Like it was like unheard of. So that's like first wave where they like got we made ground in that way where Mm -hmm. it's like now we're like working outside the home. Now we're like protesting fucking Hillary Clinton's getting like elected to things Mm -hmm. like it's fucking pretty normal for women to be. um in the workplace at least then there's like second wave which was like even going further than that and being like equal pay equal whatever whatever Mm -hmm. and then i feel like equal jobs that what you mean equal pay for equal Equal jobs jobs. although i will say we don't take into a fact uh, into account with that that we have the kids so if women are the ones having children they're the ones that are going to not be like they're going to not be at work as much or they're going to be taken away from work for at least a month. Right. Mm-hmm. So like that is where like the pay gap in some things happen. And see, that's a whole different world to me. Yeah. Because I don't I've never worked really in the corporate world. Right. So in the military, 
I don't, it doesn't matter what you are. Everyone who's the same rank gets paid the same. Yeah. Girl or guy. Yeah. And even though women get maternity leave, you're still getting paid during that yeah. leave. Um, I would love for that to be how it is. Yeah. But the way that it is now is just that, right? Where it's like, if it's a big corporate job and you're like, hey man, if you're not going to be here, I can't pay you sure. for that. Right. Yeah. So it's this thing of like, you know, like for example, on the Today Show, like Jenna took like two months off when she had her kid. Mm -hmm. Like she's being paid millions of dollars and took, and like that's awesome. She got her contract signed. She, you know, but she was gone. She wasn't at work. So mm -hmm. that's fucking huge. But not every company can handle that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like Walmart, like, or something or a smaller business or whatever. Like if you're going to leave, I can't still pay you. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, right. That, to me, that's kind of common sense. Right. But a guy, it wouldn't be that way. So if you're thinking like, oh, equal, equal, it's like there are some things I just think in intellect and all of these other like intellect better we may be better but we are the same right mm -hmm. we can reach the same heights president blah 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 rule the world all of this stuff i mean to I me just think there's just... certain things that we we have kids we stay home with them sometimes mm -hmm. like we are taken away from our jobs for just that kind of stuff and if you aren't then fuck it you should be fucking the exact same paid or whatever i feel like treatment should be equal respect should be equal for sure right all that stuff but to me but like that's already been yeah, yeah yeah well that's what i'm saying is like that's where i come from where it's like yeah we all should be treated with respect and love and like if we're do so, doing these things but to me a little bit it's like listen men are different from women yes races are different from other races yes. like we are we're built we're but made we like that's the way we were we were made no one should be treated differently because of those things though. Right. No one should be no. canceled out because no. of those things. No one should be treated any worse, any better because of those things. No. And I think that's like the biggest thing that I s see there is, you know, sometimes people think they should be treated better or worse because of genders or races or religion, or genders or races, things that they can't, I won't even say religion, things that they can't control like gender or race mm -hmm. or yeah. whatever. That should not be a factor in Never how you should are be a treated, factor. how uh, the opportunities that you're allowed. Like, yeah. let's say like a woman doesn't want to fucking have kids. Like, she should be fucking ruling the world if she wants to, right? Sure. If she doesn't want to be taken away from that job in any way and she wants to be like, this is what I want to fucking do. Yeah. I will be there every day. I am not fucking leaving. There is nothing that's going to take me away. Whatever, whatever. Yeah. Right? In these certain jobs. But what I think about this third wave of feminism. Okay. Which so is... this newest wave of the feminism? The newest wave is... Just feels like a lot of whining... And putting down women that aren't the feminists that you want them to be, right? So um, it's this wave of like, we keep whining about not having things um, instead of just putting our head down and doing it. Mm -hmm. So for me, I'm like, if I want to be at a certain level in my job, I'm going to put my fucking head down and I'm going to work and I'm going to fucking get there because I'm just as good and I can do it. Yeah. Instead of, hey... I'm going to need to ask a man to change the legislation so that I can get paid the exact same as this person that's been, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Just feels like a lot of, I feel like right now, like we went first wave, we got far. Second wave, we're getting far. Third wave, it feels like we're whining a little bit. Like I want us to realize that we're fucking awesome. Yeah. Realize that we have opportunities, not every opportunity, but we will get there. We just can't fucking crush the puppy right no. now with whining and like trying to get other people to help trying to get guys to help us with this shit like yeah. let's just fucking do it well here's here's my take on it because we talked about this on the military side of things before yeah is i feel like even more so a little bit nowadays where we were having more and more opportunities granted to us women right to do and i say i talk about this from a military aspect because this is what i'm educated on this is what i know We've had jobs that have been withheld from women in the military for a very long time that have been male-only dominated jobs. Mm -hmm. And they've now been open to females since 2016. Awesome. Here's, and I think that's incredible. But here's my issue. Is this, we want the equality there. We want to do the same jobs mm -hmm. as them. But immediately when we start trying to do them, all of a sudden it's like, whoa, 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 whoa this is too hard for me. Okay, well, then you're not built and you're not made for it then. Like, this is obviously not a job for you. Things, standards shouldn't change. Pay shouldn't change. Nothing should change in order for you to get that job. If you cannot 
hit the standards and you cannot meet the expectations right of what is set for you to me then it's like i don't care who the fuck you are you should not be doing that just because you're a woman doesn't mean they should lower their standards for you to get into that job because apparently they need to meet some quota and i think that's kind of a little bit what i've been dealing with my whole career in a sense is i've been dealing with so much not so much but i've been dealing with hate and stigma of women who've tried to do that in the past right and unfortunately i'm an all-male dominated job I have to do the exact same standards as the males. I've had to do the exact same physical fitness standards as all the males to to the occasion. occasion. If not, I have not just met the standard, but I've had to crush it and exceed it over and over again just to prove myself Mm -hmm. because I've had women in the, in the, past and women still currently now who try to make it and fail at something and then blame it on oh the pack was too heavy or it wasn't made for a woman's body or like this isn't fair because it's not the way I'm built when that has never been an excuse used in the past but now they're trying to use it for them to make it because they failed to meet that standard and so now they're trying to lower that standard so they can make it and that is what irks the fuck out of me because it's like listen I'm all for feminism when it comes to the equality I think it's awesome those jobs are open to us now. It's fucking amazing. That's great. If you can do it and you can crush it, fucking go for it. But if you can't, stop trying to lower shit. And, you know, like that does us a disservice to me. And I speak on that aspect with the jobs, but I think that kind of goes with anything. Mm -hmm. Right? So it kind of sounds like you are an anti-feminist. In that, in that, you don't need a label of that. You're like... Well, I, I hate what, labels anyway. Like, I don't want to label myself so as a feminist I mean or like, anti-feminist. But the feminists were the ones that were blaming the pack. Blaming that they didn't have, you know, things that were made for the woman's body. Blah, blah, blah. That's a feminist. That's like, they want things to be, right? So it sounds like you're like, dude, this is what it is. This is the fucking job. For the last Can 20- you do it or not? That's, that's how I feel, I though. Want, but I don't want equality. Standards. Doesn't it mean equal rights for all genders? Right? It's equal. We've been doing it, right? Yes. That's, but, so to, that's where I'm confused, right? So to me, I read, can anyone be a feminist? Yes. Being a feminist simply really means believing in equal rights for all genders. That's what I believe. Right. But then I sometimes do feel like, it's just, you hear like, point, you hear like feminazi, yes. ultra feminist, so all these this things. At point, it has a bad connotation. And so that's why I wanted to okay. veer away from that because, and I wanted to have just like a clear point of view. Like we're, we might offend you. And if you put anti-feminist, like, they know what they're getting into. So we're not going to get anybody. To offended, yeah, we're not going to get anybody in here that's like, well, they're not really sounding like they want. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know. It, we're anti Here's offense. <laughs> like, I don't, like, we're going to offend you, maybe. Um, we're anti But we don't want to be, we're not trying to be offensive. Here's no, no, th- but we may offend you if you are have certain views views on that kind of stuff. Here's I my takeaway with it all. I feel like as women, we are we talk you talked about this before, we are the hardest on each other. Yeah. We have the tendency to nitpick each other more, uh, judge each other way harsher than we do men. Yeah. Um, not give each other chances as easily as we do men, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. We have a hard time supporting one another because we are constantly like competing or like have our opinions. Or men are pitting us against each or other. Or judgments or men yeah. are doing it. That's to me, feminism should be equality amongst all genders, right? Equal rights. Uh, women supporting women, mm-hmm. no matter what your beliefs are. Mm-hmm. I might have different beliefs than you, and I might not completely agree with what you're doing. Right. But as a woman, I can still be loving and supportive instead of tearing people down. For example, I've written a post on my Instagram page. And I guarantee, I know there was, there was women who hit me up who did not agree with me. Right. And that's totally fine because I was totally open to their opinion. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just noticed that in the military community, particularly, that there's been more and more women um, who seem to be like posting extremely sexually explicit photos with them like in uniform or near it and for like for me i'm all about like 
I am about women supporting women. Mm -hmm. Like, go on with your bad self. You look fucking sexy. I think you look fucking amazing. It's your body. Do yeah. with do with it what you want. I'm in no way will ever slut shame you because I don't think that's even slutty. Mm -hmm. I think that's beautiful, mm -hmm. right? It's your expression. Everyone's super different. The only thing that I have an opinion on is the professionalism of how it looks, being in the military and uh, incorporating it with your job. I think it should be separate. And that's just my opinion. And there was other women who were like, I... With guys and girls? What do you mean? Do you feel like it should be separate with guys and girls? Like, I don't think guys should be doing that shit either. Yeah, but what, like, is there an example of something a guy would be doing in that way that is not professional? Do you know what I mean? So, like, for example, guys will post pictures of themselves shirtless mm -hmm. with their uniform bottoms open, yeah, yeah. hanging down low, mm -hmm. trying to be sexy, right. or, like, doing sexual movements in uniform on TikToks. Yeah, yeah. To me, again, I'm like, that's cringy. Yeah. And I don't really know how appropriate that is. Right. Other people might be like, oh, that's awesome. Guy like, expressing himself, being sexual, yeah. all these things, right? Yeah. To me, I don't care if you're a guy or a girl. I still think it's like a professional thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you can be funny in uniform, but I think there's sometimes a line that can be crossed. And again, this line is different for everyone. This was just my opinion. Mm -hmm. I'm not shaming anyone. Go on with your bad self. Whatever. I just think sometimes like when it comes to work and professionalism, I'm, I'm like, we just kind of got to be careful. I, yeah. to me, I feel like we got to be a little bit careful of sometimes of how we seem to be portraying ourselves because there's a lot of women that I feel like in the military per se hate the stigmas that they have to work against. Mm -hmm. Right. Just like myself. Oh, yeah. you're a slut. You got ahead because you fucked every dude. Mm -hmm. You had to fill a female quota. All, you know, you fucked your instructors, all this other shit. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, can you imagine if I was posting very sexual videos yeah. online, right? right? Like, and then in uniform or posting pictures of me in my bra with yeah. my uniform, yeah. bottoms on and kind of sexy. Mm -hmm. That, in a way, is I'm totally free to do that if mm -hmm. I want to. Mm -hmm. I mean, I will say this, though. You're in the military, so you're held to the rules and laws yeah, and regulations yeah, yeah. of UCMJ. So if someone wants to come down on you, yeah. you need to deal with the repercussions because you made that choice. But what I'm saying is that doesn't help. If I'm sitting there saying like, no, that's not who I am. I've never done any of those things. I'm just saying it doesn't really help my cause to be posting those super sexually, you know, explicit mm -hmm. pictures. Mm -hmm. To me, you can post pictures all day long. Does it have that are sexy? Does it have to be in the uniform? So for me, I have no issue with any of it mm -hmm. <laughs> because that's just somebody doing whatever the fuck they want. Right? Yeah. 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 But um, I'm not saying I have an with issue. Like, yeah, I'm yeah. just saying I have an opinion. Yeah. 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 Either yeah. way, I still think, do you Yeah. go on with your bad self? Yeah. This is my opinion. I'm totally open to everyone else's opinion. It's not going to make me think anything different mm -hmm. of you. I will have no less respect or no more respect. I yeah. Yeah. respect it. Yeah. It's just my opinion. Yeah. I think it's also like um, the third wave feminism just wants special treatment. And I don't really agree with that. I don't think you do either. Right. So it's like, for example, um, like in Yale, at Yale a long time ago, they would have a day where they would only call on women. Right. So they were like, because they were always calling on guys, like if you raise your hand or whatever. So they had a day at Yale. This was a long time ago during like the second wave uh beginning a third wave of feminism that they would be like today we're gonna only call on girls it's like the girl day hmm. and the feminism like feminist at that time protested that right because it's like we don't want do you know what i mean like we don't they didn't want special treatment. we don't want you to like have a day like we don't need you to like pick us like so you can meet some quota oh yeah, yeah. of like girls that you need to hire like we want to be hired because we're good enough but the Correct. way that we do that is to be fucking good enough like you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. like not crying about it not whining about it not making sure that we have like these special opportunities everywhere or special treatment we just do because i do believe at this point we are as good Oh, absolutely. And we, we can rise to the top of every company, every fucking, like I said, president. There fucking should be one, right? Mm -hmm. um, 
But the more we the more we talk about how inferior we are and how we need opportunities, the more we are so. So for me, I just want to stop talking about and the just fact do. that we're not getting paid enough, that we're not good enough, that we don't have enough opportunities. I want to stop talking about that and I just want to do it, right? Mm -hmm. Like in this company, like there are many times that I've been like slighted for stuff. I've been like, I could have been like, you know what? Fuck this. Like, it's just because I'm a woman, whatever. Like, you're yeah. not giving me this shit. But instead, fucking put my head Correct. down. I kept fucking working. I didn't make it seem like I was under anybody. I didn't complain about it or go to HR and say, hey, I'm going to need somebody to talk mm -hmm. to somebody. Unless it's sexual harassment, do what you got to yeah. do. But I still, I just kept my head down. Five years later, I'm finally like, have a show. Or I'm like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. have a show with someone else. I get my fucking face on the thing. It's baby steps. It but had it will I, happen if you keep your head down. If I keep my head down and do and it. And not complain. And stop yeah. talking about how, how we are inferior. And stop talking about how we don't have enough opportunities. And stop talking about the pay gap because it's connected with other things. If you, you see women that if they work hard, they're fucking, they're heads of Facebook, YouTube, like Everything. those are women yeah. that just said, all right, fuck it. Cool. I'm going to do it. I see I, that. I see, I'm going to do I it. I see the line I see you. that I'm you gonna drew do it. Yeah. in the sand and I'm going to cross it by yeah. my actions. I'm not going to tell you about it. I'm not going to hold a sign about it. I'm just going to fucking do it. Correct. So that's kind I'm of about where that. I'm at. And just the feminism right now gets such a bad rap because of Trump and everything. It's like, you know, it's just it's a third wave it, if it goes into the fourth wave and we're back into this place of stop whining about it i'm down mm -hmm. do you know what i mean mm -hmm. i was down for first wave i was down for second wave when they were just like they were really they were trying to get the vote it's not even that long ago that we got to vote right mm -hmm. and those women fucking made that happen yeah um and they got it so we're out of the fucking house and we're actually working like they fucking did shit and I think now we just need to carry that on. Mm -hmm. And we maybe don't have to fucking whine about it as much. Yeah. That's all. That's where I'm coming from. I can but see it. it's different for everybody. Like, it's different. Well, I guess on, so on Charlie's, uh, when Charlie and Heather, we had them on, you were kind of explaining that the feminists nowadays are the ones that are only supporting, that are, that are down only like, women more. I support you only if you believe what I believe or only if you do what I do. If you you're a I mean? feminist for Trump, if you believe in, if you uh, voted for Trump and you're a feminist, you're not allowed to be a feminist. Like you're not in our fucking group, right? So now it's like so this here, fucking that's, group. That's what my deal is. Like here's that the you thing: are allowed to be in or not? I can. If someone disagrees with me politically as a woman, it's like I don't feel like I should treat that woman any differently or have less support for her because of the fact of her political views or the way she dresses or the way she acts. You would think, right? Yeah. And so, don't get me wrong excuse me in life there's always gonna be people, people who you just don't like i get that yeah you know but i will say this is oh, i i almost kind of hate to admit this uh when it came to like trump and hillary right um you know it what it boiled down to it didn't boil down to anything for me when it came to like men uh, like one being a guy mm -hmm. and one being a woman mm -hmm. it boiled down to like their views and everything and as much as i didn't really agree with hillary and things she's done in the past and all this stuff i will say part of me was still like this is really fucking cool that a woman's at this level yeah. and i support that i think yeah. that's great however i don't support you and your views and like that's really all that it is yeah, i yeah. wasn't gonna vote for her because she was a woman exactly. and that was it you know i was gonna vote for it based on like you know what i kind of believed but in my heart i still even as much as i may not particularly agree yeah, with yeah, yeah. a lot of things she does or has done or believes in i still was kind of like this is really cool it right? would have been with like sarah palin or anything sure. else again different views different beliefs i might not really like care for them as much but still as a woman i was still like this is awesome yeah. we're progressing we're doing yeah. good yeah. even if we're not on the same page with life yeah i still think that's possible we all i think we're all allowed to have our opinions and our ideas and i'm not saying you have to sacrifice your morals and opinions right mm -hmm. to be like you know supporting others you can still support people yeah and be still respectful yeah. without having to believe the same thing exactly you know and i think that's kind of where it all boils down to pretty much so and just crazy times right now that label 
just hard well, that's why I was right curious now. because it's I've like been the seeing faces, the faces of that label right now are people that you'd be like, God damn. Like, yeah, you know, I don't connect with that. Yeah. So and that's the face of feminism right now. So I just don't I'm not in the group right now. That's all. You know what I mean? Okay. Like, so there's different ways of feminism. And basically the wave that it seems to be right now is that it's if you don't agree with me. Yeah. And my views and mm-hmm. what I believe should be feminism, then you're not and jumping on everybody for not giving us the opportunity that we deserve instead of making the opportunities and fucking doing okay. it. Well, I don't right? even want to. Here's the thing, too, is I don't even want to label. Yeah. I can't. So I really don't like labels sometimes because it's not that I don't fit one, but I guess I kind of don't. Yeah. I just. I believe what I believe. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I guess we made that pretty clear here today what we both believe <laughs> yeah like right and here's the thing too if you guys have different beliefs or if you guys have any comments or anything like that hit us up tell yeah. us about it i'm more than happy to listen just yeah. like i did on that post i t- you know i told people like listen i'm not shaming anyone like i am yeah, all yeah, yeah. for it to me personally i just don't think in a military role for like sure. that if we want to be working in these combat jobs with guys that us women should be leading with our bodies in yeah. situations we should be leading with our 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 actions mm-hmm. and us exceeding the standards. Yeah, that's it for sure. That's all I want it for. So. Sure, cool. Well, um, drinking brouette of the, the week. week. What I do we guess. got? We're here. Uh, well, that's the thing is we haven't been really getting as much What's in. What's going on anymore? Guys? I don't know. That's the thing. What's up? So you don't like us anymore? <laughs> we haven't really been getting uh as much we've been going through them i guess pretty quickly too so i guess this that's true huh (laughs) yeah kind of a little bit we've been kind of recording a little bit in advance so i guess this one is just gonna go out to all the people i i think this would be a good one for all so dr drew hit on something today right I think this is really good about the whole coronavirus and like what's going on. Mm-hmm. And this is coming out later. So we don't know what's been happening right. as much. But basically, he was just saying that the news needs to stop freaking out about it. And he's so thankful for the doctors, the epidemiologists, which we talked about before, mm-hmm. um, CDC workers and everyone working around the clock to figure out what's been going on and who's been dedicating themselves to this. And um, actually... Um, to there's a woman for the coronavirus there was a woman i don't, I want to find her name but she was the first one one of the first ones to get tested um for basically what do you call it for the coronavirus not no. for the corona but for a um a fix for it oh for vaccine yeah for oh. someone t- to get um the vaccine patient zero or whatever yeah so i know there was some lady and it showed her going around um she was the first person to get injected with the coronavirus vaccine in seattle her name's jennifer holler oh, shit. and um it's a new phase in the one clinical trial potential vaccine for the basically sars corona uh virus that began began on monday so i think this should go out to uh, Jennifer Holler, yeah, who's the first person to ah! get a shot to see if this vaccine for the coronavirus works. So that's crazy, super fucking brave. I think she's a mother of two. Of course, it's a woman. Um, <laughs> I think it's I think it's amazing that she did that. She's a healthy adult. She was able to go through with the trial, and they're monitoring her. She's a 43 year old woman who said that I hope that we can get to working on a vaccine quickly and that we can save the lives of people so we can go back to our life as soon as possible. And I think that's incredible that she's willing to do what it takes to see if it works. Whoa, so dude. I say this goes out to Jennifer Holler all Cheers. fucking day long. Cheers, Jennifer. You fucking rock. Dude, that's fucking crazy. I know, right? So crazy. Tell so, him. Of course it's a woman. <laughs> I she fucking did what she had to fucking do. It. She Love did what it. she had to fucking do. Yeah. So guys, feel free to hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. And if you guys really love us and you guys want to show us the love, feel free to rate us and review us on iTunes. 
star helps, but also we love reading you guys' comments and reviews. Yeah. And also, too, like anyone who's looking at suggestions for podcasts, people read those. Yeah. And if you guys are raving and reviewing about this podcast, you know, it gets more people on. Yeah. And we can keep growing and doing everything, everything for you guys. Right? Thanks, guys. Everything for you. Everything for you. Well, I think this was a very, um, this is a very good discussion. Discussion about everything. I think it was good. It was great. I think it was a great episode. It was wonderful. <laughs> do your do your white old lady voice. Oh, yes. Darling. Oh, 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 oh. Oh my goodness, Tiffany. Oh, Tiffany, this was so beautiful so to talk to you like this. Shall we grab a spot of food or drink? We shall. I'm going to grab my food that I have in a oh yeah mixing bowl with. Oh, yes, nothing's open. <laughs> nothing's open and everyone's dying. I'm staying in an Airbnb and the guy didn't have Tupperware, so I put my dinner in like a fucking Improvise. mixing bowl with saran wrap over it. So beautiful. That's what I'm doing. Okay, guys, well, until next time. Bye bye. Bye. Yeah, you've been watching every move and plotting your next move on every girl on yeah, don't y'all better things to do, yeah, go buy some fucking shoes, yeah, you're irritating, yeah, you're irritating.